Hello my friends and fellow film lovers. Welcome to my corner. I don't think this video really requires an introduction. I just wanted to say hello to you and also to let you know that what you're about to see is by no means a collection of my favorite films. It's actually a rather random collection because many of these films I actually found while browsing the shelves at used bookstores. So just to give you an idea of the context and also of the kind of contents that you will find in the collection that follows. That's all I wanted to say. So this is my Criterion collection. Let's see what we have. Most of what I have, I wanted to let you know, is Japanese cinema. So I thought I would start with that. And this is what I want to begin with right here. I want to show you the films that I have by Yasujiro Osu, who is definitely one of my favorite Japanese filmmakers, if not my favorite. So I start with Tokyo Story, which is one of his classic films. But then I really, really like his last film, An Autumn Afternoon. That is one of my favorites, even though it's one of his... It, it, this is actually his last film. But I feel like that is maybe, you know, the, the top of, of his career. So that's why I like it. But then there are other films that I have by him that I feel do not get enough attention or they do not receive the attention that they deserve, like A Story of Floating Weeds, or the remake, Floating Weeds, which is uh, the same film, but in color. He, n not really the same film, actually, but you know what I'm saying, right? He took uh, similar themes and made the same film in color. Then I have this box, Late Osu, which uh, puts together all of those films that you can see there. Early Spring, Tokyo Twilight, Equinox Flower, Late Autumn, and The End of Summer. As somebody put it, the titles of Osu's films may be confusing because you're wondering, did I watch Early Spring or, or was that Late Spring? You know what I mean? But uh, other than that, these are fantastic films that have themes that recur. So, uh, in a sense, you could say that there were only a handful of themes that Osu treated in his films, but he did that very well. Next, let me show you another uh, amazing Japanese filmmaker. I am talking about, of course, Kenji Misoguchi. And Ugetsu is the classic. That is the one that everybody mentions. It is featured on many lists of greatest films ever made. But I also have another great film by him, which is Sancho the Bailiff, based on an excellent short story, by the way, if you want to read it. And of course, Ugetsu is based on the book Ugetsu, um, which is also definitely worth your time if you want to check it out. So as adaptations, these movies are great. And also just, uh, you know, mainly as purely cinematic uh, masterpieces. And then, of course, I had to have this collection of Misoguchi's films that follow the fate of women. Osaka Elegy, Sisters of the Jion, Women of the Night, and uh, Street of Shame, which was one of his last films. Uh, that one stars Machiko Kyo. Very, very good uh, movie. So that is what I have by Kenji Misoguchi. And then um, I want to show you, of course, since we're talking about Japanese cinema, a couple of films by Akira Kurosawa, Rashomon, of course, his, well, the, the film that really put Japanese cinema in the map for quote-unquote Western audiences. So this is a classic, also based on a classic short story by uh, Ryunosuke Akutagawa, the story in a bamboo grove, and also the, it has elements of the story by him titled Rashomon. So um, Kurosawa combined two stories, and this is still an enduring film about the different perspectives that we may have about a given event, right, and how you can put all, put all those together and try to make sense of what happened in a given situation and to find the truth. But I really, really like Ran, which, as you may know, is an adaptation of King Lear. Excellent film. Okay, this is one of the films that I would say really uh, moved me deeply and that I like to rewatch because it's just a very powerful experience. We're going to continue with uh, also a couple of works by another great filmmaker from Japan, Masaki Kobayashi. And this is Kwaidan, of course, based on, on the 
the famous collection of stories and you can see one of them depicted in the cover the story of um, this uh, boy who you know the person who was drawing or, or writing all of these characters on him forgot to cover his ears and that led to a very unpleasant situation this movie brings together different stories from that collection so it is a really a collection of short films and I think that works very well but then of course if you are going to talk about Kobayashi you have to mention the huge uh, very long film it's actually a trilogy the human condition okay three parts each one of these films is roughly three hours long so what you have here is a nine hour magnum opus you, you know this is one of those things another cinematic experience that uh, you want to have I know that many people mention the next filmmaker that I have here, but I also think that he deserves more attention, and that is Kon Ichikawa. I really like the Burmese harp. This, by the way, is, if not my father's favorite film, one of his favorite films. He saw it when he was a kid, and he always says how this movie left a deep mark on him. And I remember hearing this story since I was a little kid, so I always wanted to check out this movie because I was like, wow, it must be very powerful. And when I finally got the chance to watch it, it did not disappoint me at all. This one, The Burmese Harp and Fires on the Plane, also by Ichikawa, are films that people like to watch back to back, and I highly recommend doing that. And then another film, this one towards the end of his career, The Makioka Sisters, based of course on the masterpiece by Junichiro Tanisaki, or one of his best novels, at least, about the four sisters and the order in which they can get married. So it's one of those family stories. Very well done. Kon uh, Koni Chikawa was great at adapting uh, literary texts also, so uh, definitely look out for that when it comes to this filmmaker. Then by Kaneto Shindo I have Onibaba, a type of horror story um, but just, uh, you know, one of those haunting films, right? So I really enjoy uh, re-watching this one and it does have a demonic type of a theme to it. That's why you see that on the cover. And then, of course, you can tell that this is in no particular order when it comes to chronology. I have by Hirokazu Koreeda, Still Walking. Hirokazu Koreeda is probably my favorite Japanese, contemporary Japanese filmmaker. Like, at the moment, I think his films are the ones that I enjoy most. Still Walking is a very good one, but also After Life is one of my favorite uh, movies by him. After the Storm, and uh, definitely, if I had to choose one, I think I would go with Like Father, Like Son. Most of his movies, as you know, explore the theme of family. You can definitely see that in Shoplifters, right? So um, there are many, many films that kind of follow a similar theme. So I see a connection right there with Yasujiro Osu. Uh, Shohei Imamura is another Japanese filmmaker that I admire very much and I have Vengeance is mine. I wish I had more by him, like maybe that trilogy, the initial trilogy, uh, Pigs and Battleships, ships, um, you know, The Insect Woman and Intentions of Murder, I think was the other one. So I really uh, wish I had that, but Vengeance is Mine is very good. And actually, uh, Roger Ebert included this one on his list of great films. Then a filmmaker that sometimes gets, if you ask me, the wrong type of attention is Nagisa Oshima. And I chose to uh, include here Empire of Passion, which is, I believe, the only film that I own by Oshima. No, actually, I have other films in a, from a British collection. But I really like this one. It's a historical film. So that's one of the frames in which you can watch it. We are getting close to the end of my Japanese film collection, but um, that doesn't mean that I left the least important for last or anything like that, because I am showing you here Mikio Naru says, When a Woman Ascends the Stairs. Excellent movie, okay? I, I highly recommend this one. If you watch one of the films that I'm showing you from the Japanese collection, I would say begin with this one, because I uh, think it's very powerful. And what I did say for last is kind of something in the realm of the weird. And when I say that, you're probably, you probably already know what I'm going to show you. I have Haosu, okay? So, uh, classic, classic uh, weird film by Nobuhiko 
Obayashi. This is just great fun, okay? It's a horror movie, but it's one of those horror movies that you can actually laugh at. And actually, if you think about this movie, it has a lot of depth to it. So it's not just a silly movie, you know? I got the chance to watch it uh, in the... To see it in the on the big screen so uh, that was a very powerful experience and just as interesting as a film was looking at other people's reaction to it so and then uh, also something that i consider to be in that sort of realm of the strange the eerie etc is jigoku by nobuo nakagawa a film in which literally everybody goes to hell so i highly recommend that you watch this movie because it's dark but it's also a lot of fun so that was my uh japanese collection now we're going to switch to uh something different because we're going to look at some of the french films that i have and i want to show you first something that i have deep uh respect and admiration for this is the adventures of antoine duanel by of course francois truffaut so it has the 400 blows stolen kisses bed and board love on the run and you also get the shorts right like Le Miston and Antoine and Colette which is uh, also on the same uh, cycle or films related to that next I'm going to show you a trilogy in French by a Spanish director and you already know what I'm talking about another set of films that I have deep respect for and that I enjoy immensely I am talking of course about Louis Buñuel the discreet charm of the bourgeoisie these make up a sort of trilogy thematic trilogy you can find similar elements here the next one which would be the phantom of liberty and it, this is probably if i had to choose one uh buñuel film i would choose this one believe it or not so if you're new to buñuel i definitely recommend beginning with um, the Phantom of Liberty and then the last part you can see this I actually bought from a Hollywood video it still has the stickers and everything the uh, obscure object of desire which was also his last film so uh, great great movies here that you can enjoy on many different levels then I have one that I have not seen uh, entirely because this one brings together many many shorts it brings together 23 films. The general title that they decided to give to the collection is Science is Fiction by the director Jean Pendlevé. So you get, uh, you know, many, many different films. You can see some of them are mentioned here about different uh, topics uh, like zoology, you know, scientific type of films. So it's very interesting. So I'm looking forward to the opportunity to uh, watch this. I have shown, shown you before in a previous video this film, also from the Nouvelle Vague, Céline and Julie Go Boating by Jacques Rivette. I really love Jacques Rivette. I have seen many films by him. This is one of the movies by him that I enjoyed the most. But of course, there is Out One, which lasts, I, I cannot tell you off the top of my head, but we are talking maybe about 13 hours, and I had the chance to watch that during a summer and i enjoyed it it has many moments of excess uh, as you can probably imagine but it is really a great film but celine and julie go boating is really something that you should check out i have by by uh louis mal au revoir les enfants so this is also part of a thematic trilogy along with murmurs uh in the heart murmurs of murmur of the heart i believe was the title and then uh la comme lucienne which is based on a um, screenplay by Patrick Modiano, my one of my favorite um, French authors. So Au revoir les enfants is really a great piece about um, growing up when uh, you're going through very difficult historical circumstances. So basically how big life-altering historical events affect children. I like movies that show that kind of a theme. I have of course uh, Diabolique, this is a movie that really requires no explanation this was the great shocker before psycho was released so uh, it still has uh, you know it keeps being effective so if you like that kind of movie uh, i would say check out diabolique because it's great then a movie that surprised me i mean i i knew that this was going to be a good movie but i just did not know how good and i found it to be really really impressive is 
the Battle of Algiers by Gilo Pontecorvo. So I really uh, also enjoyed this one very much. It has a documentary style to it, and it's uh, well one of the ways to describe it would be as a political film. So you can definitely use that frame uh, when you watch that movie. And then, believe it or not, I have only one film by Jean-Luc Godard, which is Tout va bien. Not really um, one of the films by him that you hear a lot about. This one stars Jane Fonda, so you, you can see how strange this movie is. But I really liked it, you know. There is that famous shot in Weekend of the Traffic. There is a similar shot, maybe even, uh, you know, an equivalent shot in this movie of the supermarket, you know. So um, this is also a, a great film by Godard, and, and I feel like not many people talk about it. So that is my collection of uh, French films. And then I have, uh, I'm going to start showing you some movies in English, and I wanted to begin with the trilogy by Witt Stillman, which I believe is amazing, okay? I really like Metropolitan. It's, I think, a lot of fun. Equally good, at least to me. I, I still, I had just as much fun watching Barcelona, so I thought that one was great too. And by the way, I don't have these from the same collection. I bought them separately. Um, through the through the years and then the last part I think I need to watch again because for some reason I enjoyed the others more than I did this one but the last days of disco there's a way that you can read these three films as an allegory of Christianity believe it or not so that is one way that you can uh, approach these a film that is related uh, to those that I just showed you is this one kicking and screaming by Noah Baumbach. I really like this film. Actually, I find it very funny, even though it's in a way not meant uh, as a funny movie because it depicts a very tragic situation, people who don't want to grow up or who are not able to grow up. But uh, the first time that I saw this, I was like, wow, I had never even heard of this film. And it is really, really funny. It has a lot of quotable moments. Then I have the Royal Tenenbaums by, uh, of course, uh, Wes Anderson. I need to watch this one again. Uh, at the moment, or at the point when I watched it, I did not feel that this was one of my favorite movies by him, but uh, many people uh, regard it very highly, so I, I probably should watch it again. And then another film that I cannot believe does not get talked about more is Shortcuts by Robert Altman, based on short stories by Raymond Carver. I think he did a very good job in combining all of this, these stories. And as someone said before, this is the novel that Raymond Carver did not write. If you look at it that way, you get a very, very good result with shortcuts. Then I have this old edition of Robocop, a movie that shocked me the first time that I saw it. So I decided to get the Criterion release one time that I saw it at Half Price Books, as you can see, because it still has the tag. And then we're going to go to Canada, briefly, with something that I have shown you before, which is, of course, Videodrome by David Cronenberg. This is my favorite film by Cronenberg, so I wanted to share that with you. I think it's the one that exemplifies his style and his approach uh, the best. Of course, The Fly is a great film, you know, Dead Ringers, so many of his films. I really have enjoyed most of them. He is one of my favorite directors. But the one that has really affected me the most is definitely Videodrome. Next, I have a great film from Australia, which is, of course, Picnic at Hanging Rock. This is a great mystery, but it is also uh, a movie of, of manners. So it is really, really uh, powerful as a cinematic experience. This is a film that I really love. I watched it as soon as it was released, knowing, having absolutely no idea what it was about. And many years later, I read the novella that it's based on. And uh, it's a very sad story, but it has that documentary style that Ken Loach is known for. Another uh, great filmmaker, if you ask me. Hidden Agenda is a great film. Uh, I, Daniel Blake, I really like that one too. Really, when, when a Ken Loach film is released, I make a point of watching it, because uh, he, he always surprises me in a good way. Then I have, of course, If, one of those 
classics. I like how this film combines color and black and white and also of course the performance by Malcolm McDowell is really something to remember. So there it is. If you like dystopia, of course, you need to watch Brazil, a movie that is often paired with Blade Runner. So you can, some people have, have spoken about a neo-baroque type of style with these two films. So that's Brazil. I have the single disc edition, by the way. A little bit of an older film right here, The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp. This I got from Roger Ebert's list of great films, and, and I really uh, thought it was very, very well done. And this little classic. With no and I. Very funny, very funny, very pathetic also. It's a great movie. The next one I got also from Hollywood Video when they were closing. There was a Hollywood Video, believe it or not, that had Criterion Collection films. And I found the Buñuel film there, and this one, The Long Good Friday, which I knew nothing about, but it was so affordable because it was on sale that I decided to get it, and I really liked it also. And this was, I believe, the first Criterion Collection film that I ever got. And you can probably see the connection here. Like many people, as I have said before, I was asked to kindly read Lord of the Flies in high school. Um, many years later I uh, reread the novel also and I decided to see how it had been adapted in this original adaptation, not the one from the 90s, which I have not seen by the way. But I really like Peter Brook's work. Mahat Saad is a, one of my favorite films also. Let's go to Sweden, okay? And when I say that, you already know what I'm going to show you. I'm going to start with this one. I do not have a lot of um, copies of films by Ingmar Bergman, N not in the Criterion Collection editions at least. This was also one of my early uh, Criterion DVDs that I got. And there's actually a very sad story with this one. You know, this one does not work anymore. You know that weird thing that happens to DVDs that sometimes they stop working when they're kind of a little bit older? Well, that happened to this one. It's the only time it has happened to me with a Criterion DVD. And I know that there are many, many reissues of this one, so I should probably get a new one. Because I really would like to have a copy of this one. I have said before that Persona is my favorite Bergman film. That is true. I mean, uh, from a cinematic perspective, that is true. But in terms of how I respond to the film and how I enjoy watching it, I would say that my favorite is actually Wild Strawberries. It is hopeful. You know, it, it has Bergman to it, but it is also hopeful. So I think this is one of his best films. And I have one movie that uh, not many people mention by him, which is The Magician. Great stuff, you know. Uh, there was a time when magician movies were quite popular. Remember The Illusionist, The Prestige? So Bergman kind of anticipated that. And I think uh, this is a very enjoyable film. And then I have this film, also highly underrated, if you ask me, based on the novels by Avin Johnson. Here is your life. Okay, I, I really enjoy this one. It's a coming-of-age film about growing up, but also great from the stylistic uh, approach, right? It has great, great camera work and many experiments. You can tell that the filmmakers were experimenting different approaches, different styles, different angles and uh, colors and things like that. So this is another film that I absolutely love that I don't really know many people who have uh, seen it. I want to show you a couple of German films. This was also one of my early Criterion Collection DVDs, The Lost Honor of Katharina Blum, based on the novel by um, Heinrich Böll. Great story, okay, great story, um, starring Angela Winkler. And the next one, she's also in that movie, and this is also a classic based on a classic novel. You know what I'm talking about. 
the tin drum, of course. I think it's a great adaptation, as far as you can say that you can adapt the tin drum to film. It's very difficult, of course, and it does not cover the entire novel, needless to say. But I still think that this is a very, very good uh, way to adapt this magnificent and just, you know, illimitable novel by uh, Günther Grass. I have next two films from the Czechoslovak New Wave, favorites also of mine. One is Valerie and Her Week of Wonders, based on a great novel also. So I say, you know, uh, yeah, watch the film definitely, but also make sure that you check out the text, the written text. And then Marketa Nasarova. This is a great historical film. Many people uh, have seen a comparison or maybe affinity between this film and the next one that I'm going to show you. And I'm actually thinking about writing a review of both of them at some point. You probably know what I'm talking about already. It is, of course, Andrei Rublev by Andrei Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky is really one of my... If I had to choose five favorite filmmakers, Tarkovsky would definitely be one of them. And I have two more films by him on Criterion. Soliaris. Great novel too, by the way. So great like speculative fiction and, and that type of, of thing that has been called science fiction just like the next one that I'm going to show you which is kind of a sister film to Soliaris which is of course Stalker. All of these are very poetic, uh, slow, they take their time so that you can actually think about what you're seeing. That's what I like about Tarkovsky and that's what infuriates many people about Tarkovsky but I think uh, he was really one of the great poets of the cinema. So I, I really love Tarkovsky. And speaking of filmmakers that I love, look at this. Kieślowski, okay, Blind Chance. I think this is one of his best films. It is really great how, uh, of course it was, uh, there's a later film done in Hollywood that looks very much like this one, or, or it doesn't look like this one, but you know what I'm saying, right? The story is very similar. This was the original one. What happens if you change one little thing in your life and your fate is altered entirely? So it's a great premise. And because I really like the theme of the doppelganger, I have the double life of Veronique. This idea that we need a double because the original gets tired after a while. You need to replace the original with another person. This is a late masterpiece by Kieślowski. I wish I could show you the Criterion Collection version of Decalogue. Unfortunately, I don't have that, not yet at least. But I'm going to show you probably the next best thing, which is the Three Colors trilogy. Blue, white, and red. Please don't ask me which one is my favorite. I Don't do that to me, okay? I, I like all three of them. Even white, which some people tend to dismiss because it's different, as you know. It's kind of a more of a comedy, dark comedy. But I think all of three of these films are, are just excellent. I have two movies from Taiwan. Both of them by the amazing, the unforgettable Edward Young. Yi Yi was my favorite by him. This is a movie that I cannot recommend enough. I hope that you have seen it. And then, also very good, but to me, in my experience, not as powerful as Yi Yi, A Brighter Summer Day, which could be retitled, if we wanted to do that, Gangs of Taipei. Very long films, these two, right? I absolutely love Wong Kar Wai. There is no reason why I have left him for uh, last or close to last. Chunking Express was a movie that altered my experience of watching films. So... Here it is. And then the one that many people consider to be his masterpiece, which is, of course, In the Mood for Love. I also recommend the text that this is based on. It's a, it's a novella, and it, it is just a very, very interesting narrative. Very different, of course, from the movie. But it's still very well written. 
Another movie that needs a lot more attention than it gets from Spanish cinema by Victor Erice is El Espíritu de la Colmena, Spirit of the Beehive. So I cannot recommend this one enough. And finally, I have two Italian films. La Strada by Fellini, which I, I found it very, very affordable. That's one of the reasons why I bought it, really. I was not drawn to this movie, but it was there. So I was like, okay, that's good. And then, last but definitely not least, the great film, which is La Ventura by Michelangelo Antonioni. And it needs no comment, really. So that was my Criterion collection. Do you see anything here that you're interested in? Please let me know and maybe I can put together a little video on it, some kind of a film review or maybe some comments or a little list of my favorite films or something like that. Just let me know. Do you have any questions, comments, recommendations, recipes? As always, I look forward to reading them and to responding to them. Thank you so much for stopping by and have a wonderful day.